This is the on-site retrofit guide by Electrofit Systems for Midmark and Ritter, Model 75 Evolution, 111, 119, 311, and 319 Power Procedure Tables. At Electrofit.com there is the online retrofit guide with a printable version at the end of the guide. Let's move on to page 2, and get started. Prepare one or two boxes lined with a large plastic leaf bag for disposal of unused parts. Raise the table and back to full up position. Tilt the table on its right side high enough to remove the four nuts holding the motor mounts. Set the table on a four wheel dolly and move to the side of the room. Clean up the floor where the table was sitting. Set a large piece of poly on the floor to catch oil spillage. Move the table back over poly. Table to remain on the four wheel dolly during the installation process. Page 3 Raise the tilt approximately 30 degrees. Remove the foot section with upholstery and set aside. Remove the back and seat upholstery and set aside. Remove the motor cover and all cover panels and set aside. Clip and remove all wire ties and hose clamps. Remove foam insulation from motor cover best as possible. If this is performed in a shop, Soaking the motor cover in a utility sink with hot soapy water does a good job of removing the plastic film. Page 4, remove the rod end clevis pin from the back cylinder and lower the back onto the seat. Retract the back cylinder. Safety warning, this must be done to avoid the table from flipping over when the tilt cylinder clevis pin is removed. This is very important. Remove clevis pins from the tilt cylinder and retract the cylinder. Keep these pins, they may be reused. Remove the H brace, also called a column brace, held in by four bolts. Page 5, set a 9 inch long 2x4 block of wood to support the column beside the base cylinder. Lower the base cylinder down until the column rests securely on the block of wood. There should be no tension on the base cylinder for ease of later removal. Remove the rod end clevis pin from the base cylinder and retract the cylinder. Remove the rod end clevis pin from the leg cylinder and retract the cylinder. Disconnect power. Unplug the table. Disconnect the hose at position 1 on the pump motor as shown and then disconnect the hose at position 2. Carefully disconnect the hose at position 3 and quickly replace with the hose from position 2. Careful not to spill too much oil. Disconnect all wiring from the motor to the terminal box. Carefully remove the capacitors. Remove the pump motor. Set into the plastic lined box. Page 6, remove all hydraulic hoses and cylinders in the following order, 1 back, 2 leg, 3 tilt, 4 base. Drain the oil from the, the hoses as they are removed. Set into the plastic lined box. Remove all of the existing wiring including the tray switch, terminal box and electrical outlet wiring if any. Set into the plastic lined box. Do not remove the two existing grounding straps located at the back and leg hinges. Clean the table thoroughly with window cleaner and paper towels to remove all mineral oil, dust and trash. Clean the base with alcohol in the service areas behind the covers. Must be clean and dry enough for Velcro to properly adhere. Page 7, Getting to know the terminology. The large end of the actuator is referred to as the back end and the opposite end is referred to as the rod end. The clevis is the forked metal connector at each end of the actuator that fits into a space referred to as the tang. See actuator label for identification. Page 8, Install the base actuator. The base actuator has a spacer under the clevis on the rod end. No adjustment should be necessary unless the table's base tang had been broken and was repaired with a base cylinder mount kit. Remove the rod end spacer if the base cylinder mount kit is present. Page 9, Install the tilt actuator. Page 10, Install the leg actuator. Note the placement of the clevis. Page 11, Install the back actuator. Note the placement of the clevis. Only insert the back end clevis at this time. Page 12, insert the power cord through the base of the table and connect the hospital grade plug on the cord and insert the two cord connectors. 
Lay the wiring harness in place around the right side of the base actuator and plug in all actuators with cable locks. Note back cable routing on page 14. The wiring harness cables are labeled as follows, back cable 1, tilt cable 2, leg cable 3. The base actuator cable 4 plugs directly into the CB16. The foot control plugs into DJB port 1. The hand control plugs into DJB port 2. Set digital junction box in place with Velcro. Page 13, loop excess cables clockwise around actuator as shown in photo. Install wire ties as needed. Connect all cables to the CB16 controller. Set CB16 controller in place with Velcro. Connect the grounding conductor to the base of table. Note, all plugs must be fully seated for the table to function. Page 14. Plug the table into an approved 115 volt outlet. The table is now partially operational. Note, the table may beep on all functions at this time. Utilizing the hand or foot control, extend the back actuator rod and install the rod end clevis. Raise the base actuator enough to remove the 9 inch wood block. Lower all the actuators to their lowest position. This allows the CB16 controller to acknowledge and set the starting position of all the actuators. This is also noted on the back of the hand control. Page 15, secure the leg actuator with the special clip provided. Tighten the set screws. Page 16, the wiring harness attaches to the table in three locations as noted in the photos. 1, on the base of the table. 2, on the column. 3. Under the seat, loosely tied to allow for cable movement. Check proper placement of all cabling and check that all plugs are locked at the motors and digital junction box with cable locks. Carefully observe all motions to make sure there is no pinching or stretching of the cables. Check to make sure all set screws are tight. Page 17. Install the H-brace with spacers. An older designed H-brace may need to be cut to allow for motor clearance. See provided template. A new H-brace may be purchased in advance. Install upholstery. Clean the upholstery with window cleaner. Page 18, install all remaining panels. Discard the original insulated back panel covering the H-brace. This panel will not be needed. The upper back panel will have to be cut. See provided template. This panel may be purchased in advance. Before installing the provided edge trim in the new cutout, use a hair dryer or heat gun to carefully soften the plastic. Cut excess edge trim. Note, edge trim contains adhesive. Using a half inch knockout punch enlarge the existing hole where the original foot switch cable passed through the lower front panel. Install the hand and foot control cable through the panel with provided grommet as shown. The grommet is installed from the inside of the metal panel. Page 19, install the motor cover with supplied washers and screws. If a table has a motor cover that is broken at the points of attachment, you may want to purchase a set of motor cover straps as shown. Note. SEM bumper coater part number 39193 is the perfect paint to recoat the motor cover if necessary. It etches the plastic and dries in 6 minutes. Move the table off the poly. Clean, fold and set aside. Remove all trash from the procedure room. Set the table back into position and plug into an approved 115 volt outlet. Perform leakage current tests. Page 20. To program any preset position simply press the set button, then press 1, 2, or 3 until you hear a beep. To return the table to a programmed position simply press and hold the corresponding button 1, 2, or 3 from the previous step. Place the Electrofit kit serial number near the upper back side of the table. Clean surface with alcohol prior to label application. Congratulations, the table is now complete. Page 21, if you have any questions or comments, please go to electrofit.com and click the contact us tab. Visit electrofit.com to view the interactive retrofit guide. Many photos enlarge for closer inspection.